In the first half of the 20th century, recruiting posters got the job done. But since the draft ended, the U.S. military's recruiting commands have relied heavily on mass media advertising to make their manpower quotas. As you may have heard, mass market advertising in America isn't cheap, and the Pentagon dedicates hundreds of millions of dollars for the Army, Navy, Air Force, Space Force, and Marine Corps to retain high-powered agencies that develop campaigns and then place the ads where they think they'll be most effective. This is a tough business that involves trying to figure out first where the 17 to 24 year olds are media consumption wise and second, the social science around what motivates them. These days, the mission is made even harder by the fact that only a fourth of the current demographic, labeled as Gen Z, is eligible for military service due to obesity, drug offenses, and tattoos that exceed regulations that have already been generously modified in recent years. Among the branches of the U.S. military, the Marine Corps has traditionally been the best at marketing themselves with their unflinching messages like this one. But for some reason, they tried a, let's call it, less direct strategy in 1987. Check this out. The reaction both inside and out of the Marine Corps was so bad in the wake of that airing that they wound up firing their ad agency, Arthur Anderson. And then last year, the U.S. Army launched this animated campaign. This is the story of a soldier who operates your nation's Patriot Missile Defense Systems. It begins in California with a little girl raised by two moms. Although I had a fairly typical childhood, took ballet, played violin, I also marched for equality. I like to think I've been defending freedom from an early age. When I was six years old, one of my moms had an accident that left her paralyzed. Doctors said she might never walk again. But she tapped into my family's pride to get back on her feet, eventually standing at the altar to marry my other mom. With such powerful role models, I finished high school at the top of my class and then attended UC Davis, where I joined a sorority full of other strong women. But as graduation approached, I began feeling like I'd been handed so much in life, a sorority girl stereotype. Sure, I'd spent my life around inspiring women, but what had I really achieved on my own? One of my sorority sisters was studying abroad in Italy. Another was climbing Mount Everest. I needed my own adventures, my own challenge. And after meeting with an army recruiter, I found it, a way to prove my inner strength and maybe shatter some stereotypes along the way. I'm U.S. Army Corporal Emma Malone Lord, and I answered my calling. Now that ad basically broke the internet for reasons the U.S. Army certainly didn't intend and launched a million charges among military veterans and others of rampant wokeism in the ranks. It's notable in the wake of that campaign that the U.S. Army missed its recruiting goals by 25%, which equals 15,000 soldiers. So let's just go out on a limb here and say whatever agency and their U.S. Army Recruiting Command counterparts who thought that a U.S. military as great place for identity politics theme would work seriously failed. So perhaps in response to that flop, the U.S. Navy just launched its latest recruiting campaign 
In fact, they did so on the service's 247th birthday. But before we break down that ad, let's review the highlights of the U.S. Navy's mass media messaging over the last five decades or so, starting with this classic. Set special C in anchor detail. Order of call, Hong Kong. Let's go the anchor. Liberty call now, Liberty call. Most jobs promise you the world. The Navy delivers. See your recruiter or call this number. Navy, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. The U.S. Navy went from it's not just a job, it's an adventure, to let the journey begin, to global force for good, which was intended to appeal to those who might prefer humanitarian type operations over an actual shooting war. And along the way, the Navy also decided their target audience was watching arena football and NASCAR, campaigns both of which ultimately cost a lot of money but yielded few, if any, recruits. The Navy's latest recruiting theme is Forged by the Sea. And as reported by our friends at US9 News, the goal of this campaign, according to VMLYNR, the Navy's ad agency, is to challenge the eligible pool to never say never to the idea of joining, which is why this ad is called Never. So here it is. I said I'd never join. Not living on itself would be too hard. I figured only the weatherman tracks storms. I said my job wouldn't matter. I figured I'd never get out of my hometown. Or be the one who stops an attack. Joining the Navy sounds crazy. Saying never actually is. As I mentioned before, a lot of recruiting is social science, and nothing in these ads is arbitrary. Ten sailors in that ad have speaking roles. Four are female, six are males. Two are Hispanic, three are black, and five are white. Rating and warfare specialty wise, there are three surface warfare types, a bridge watch, a weather guesser, and a guy in the combat decision center, a nuke submariner, a corpsman, a CB, a helicopter pilot, a special warfare combat craft crewman, or SWIC, and two SEALs. I give this ad points for atmospherics. There's nothing soft about it. There's plenty of ops action and even some trigger pulling, something recruiting commercials have traditionally hesitated to show. To its credit, it does not attempt to morph the U.S. Navy into a non-governmental organization or progressive political action committee or anything other than a military outfit. The guy in charge of the Navy's recruiting command, Rear Admiral Alexis Walker, said, We want to share with Gen Z the life-changing opportunities the Navy provides, defending against our adversaries and ensuring our global economy travels over free and open seas. US9 News reports that according to VML Y and R, this campaign will play on social media apps like Instagram, which data shows appeals to the Gen Z population. While the video-based TikTok is one of the most popular social media apps among the younger generation, the military is not allowed to advertise on it due to complications with the company's Chinese ownership. The Navy also advertises on streaming services like Hulu, and in this brave new world, the service uses its eSports team to track sailors via Twitch. And at this point, I'll mention that I have a Twitch channel called The Real Mooch, where I fly DCS missions. Look for the link in the episode description below. It's also notable that the Navy no longer advertises on regular broadcast television. Ultimately, there won't be any guesswork about whether this or any other follow-on campaigns are successful. It's all about the U.S. Navy and the other services hitting their recruiting goals. And as us and News reports, that while the Navy met its goal of recruiting 33,400 active duty enlisted sailors for fiscal year 22, it had to draw heavily on its delayed entry pool to hit that target. The Navy did not meet its goals for the reserve or for active duty officers. And to meet the projected end strength for fiscal year 23, the Navy needs to bring on 37,700 active duty enlisted sailors. So that'll do it for this episode. If you're not already a subscriber, hit the button and ring the bell so you don't miss anything. 
Also, if you'd like to help support the channel, please consider using the super thanks, the heart icon below, or become a patron at patreon.com slash wardcarroll. In the meantime, I look forward to talking to you again very soon.